to us, uh, what do you mean by social security benefits? Social security benefits are basically uh, measures that have been designed to actually protect individuals and families uh, against the loss of income, which can result um, or caused by contingencies such as unemployment, uh, occupational injury and disease, or death, or a person going on maternity leave. So basically, the main objectives of these social security uh, benefits is to maintain income, uh, provide some uh, health care and also benefits to families, especially in the, in the, in the case where the, 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 the head of the family is deceased. So, mm -hmm. Are these security benefits open to all minors? Yes, they are open to all minors. Um, the, when you are recruited in the mining sector, most of the mining companies are members of particular social security institutions uh, or funds, for example, like the Mine Workers Provident Fund. So you find that mining companies contribute on a monthly basis towards your retirement insurance so that at the end of your uh, work period, you'll be able to access those benefits. Um, and so in the case of migrant workers, it's the same situation that at the end of their work in South Africa in the mining industry, they should be able to access those social security benefits. They should benefits. be able or they're supposed to get it? They are supposed to access those social security benefits. So why can't they access it? So, um, like I um, mentioned earlier, there are procedures and processes for you to access the social security benefits, but there are a number of challenges that the former migrant workers encounter to, to actually access these benefits. Uh, the Southern Africa Trust actually commissioned a study, a regional study, in uh, three countries, which is Swaziland, Mozambique, and Lesotho, like you have mentioned earlier. And the findings in, this, in the study is that one of the challenges is the lack of information for the former migrant workers in terms of the administrative procedures and formalities for them to actually access those benefits. Uh, some of them, uh, when they come to work at the end of their period, if they have a work permit, they have to go back and they can't wait for the money because the money is not immediately released. So when they go back and you find that when they had registered uh, to, uh, I mean, when they were recruited, the address they probably would have used when they were recruited, mm -hmm. when they are trying to trace them back home, they probably would have moved to somewhere else. And it's been a challenge for most of these social security institutions to actually trace where these beneficiaries are. But also on the part of the migrant workers is having no information as well where to, 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 to actually go and, 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 and what procedures to follow. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, among other challenges is actually some of the procedures that they have to encounter because what has happened is that some of these social security institutions have hired service providers in these countries to actually disburse these social security benefits. But in terms of the periods, the delayed uh, payment periods and the follow-ups because some of these minors are located in very rural areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... That's why we are actually mm -hmm. having this dialogue, this to, dialogue. To, to actually look at how do we, uh, as the stakeholders, key stakeholders who are involved in this process, unlock these benefits and mm -hmm. find ways, uh, effective ways, coordinated ways, you know, not us to disperse these funds. Yeah. Do you only find this challenge with migrant workers or even South African miners as well? Yes, um, if you look at the percentage, uh, like you have alluded to earlier, is that in terms of the mining uh, workers' population, uh, in South Africa, it's almost 60%, uh, like you've mm -hmm. uh, indicated. So there are a number of migrant workers, but even South African uh, uh, former my, uh, mine workers have also encountered the same challenges. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at this dialogue, uh, there is currently a strike in the platinum mine sector in South Africa. Among other things, unions are demanding higher wages uh, and the better treatment of these miners. Will this form part and parcel of your discussions? No, uh, the dialogue is focused more on the former migrant mine mm -hmm. workers and the accessing of social security benefits, so we would not tackle their current strike which is happening in South Africa. Yeah. Now, the recently concluded mining in Darba in Cape Town, um, where issues pertaining to miners were discussed, were you happy with that particular outcome? Did it have uh, any discussions around this issue of the social, of the access to social security? Um, if you look at the mining industry, most of the focus is more on what is the impact of mining in terms of the environment and the communities that are around the mining sector, and also looking at issues to, towards how these mining, um, I mean, the communities that are around mining sectors can benefit from what is mm -hmm. uh, from from the mines. So they don't really look 
at the social security uh, component mm -hmm. and we uh, supported um, one of our association, the Southern African Miners Association, which is a migrant workers platform, to actually participate in what they call an alternative mining endeavor, where they actually shared in terms of the challenges of, 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 of them accessing those social security benefits and hoping that this can be put on the agenda maybe for the next mm -hmm. mining endeavor. Yeah. Expectations and outcomes for the two-day dialogue, what do you expect? What we're expecting is... Um, to have a comprehensive approach adopted from the key stakeholders because we are inviting, we have invited uh, the ex-mine workers, the governments from Swaziland, Mozambique and Lesotho are also participating and we are also uh, invited other civil society organizations that are working around migration and social protection but it's to come up with a roadmap of how we can actually support these migrant workers in coming up with a solution for them to actually access these uh, benefits, uh, to find coordinated efforts in terms of how they can trust these uh, uh, lapsed beneficiaries in the different countries and also more important is to discuss how can there be a regional uh framework uh, which can be operational within the Southern African Development Community, uh, establishing a cross-border portability mechanism which will facilitate disbursement of social security benefits to actually address some of these challenges. Because if once this is in place, like the way it works in Europe, you can work in one country and your benefits can move from, from one country to another if you work in a different country and such a system should be able to work within Southern Africa. Will there be representation from the migrant miners at the dialogue? Yes, there will be representation from migrant, my, uh, migrant uh, workers, the former migrant workers. There are associations in uh, the three countries um, and also there is a regional uh, association, the Southern African Miners Association. They will be part of the discussions. Christelle, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. That was uh, Christabel Piri, a program manager at Social Capital, telling us about the two-day regional dialogue aimed at finding ways for migrant mine workers and their dependents to access social benefits by the migrant miners.